Hey everyone, Andy Trice here, and uh, today I want to show you my latest build. Um, so this is a nylon string guitar. It's 650 millimeter scale length, um, set up like a classical guitar. It's um, Indian rosewood back and sides with a western red cedar top, um, mahogany neck with carbon fiber inserts, and then a zero cote fretboard. Uh, zero cote is kind of like a Mexican ebony. Um, and then with an inlay, with birds on it. I'm calling this guitar the Songbird. And the inlay is Paduk, zebra wood, and maple. And then also with a zebra wood rosette and then a zebra wood end graft. And um, like I said, I just finished this today. With that uh, red cedar top, it's got a very rich, like full and kind of a a really rich and full kind of sound, a lot of low end to it. Um, not only that, but it is also um, got a pick a pickup in it. There's a um, Fishman undersaddle pickup uh, right here with a onboard preamp tuner, that kind of stuff. Um, and it's meant to just be, you know, all around just kind of a nice guitar to play. Um, I really like how this one sounds. It's very lightweight, um, got a big sound to it, and um, I'm getting ready to do another build video, so I hope you enjoy it. I'm just going to record a quick demo now. It all started as an idea on paper. Combine that with some classical guitar plans, then I started making the templates, and then I started reworking some pre-bent sides into the single cutaway shape. Next, I shaped the heel and the neck block, followed by the curving strips to provide additional gluing surface for the top and back. Here I use a hand plane for the tuning board to get a near perfect joint on the western red cedar top, and of course join it with some bar clamps. Then I cut out a rough perimeter to get it closer to the working shape of the instrument. Once that's done, I went ahead and cut out the zebra wood rosette, first with a circle cutter, and then trimmed it up. I then used the same process to join the rosewood back, and again, cut it to perimeter. And when that was done, went ahead and started cutting the circle inlay for the rosette. Next I started working on the soundboard bracing. This is a Ramirez style of fan bracing. And once the glue is dry, I went ahead and started voicing the soundboard by trimming off excess material off the bracing. Up next was preparation of the neck. Here you can see um, from the neck bike, adding blocks for the heel, and then also adding the scarf joint for the headstand. Here I'm adding side ribs for extra strength in the instrument. Next, I started working on the bracing for the back of the guitar. Here I'm adding a back strip to reinforce the glue joint, um, the seam in two pieces on the back. And then I started working on the crossbars. Here you can see they were cut to shape and then sanded to the 15 foot radius on the radius dish and glued into place. Then again, shaped those both for aesthetic purposes and also to produce weight. Here you can see I'm um, sanding the sides on the radius dish. This is often referred to as driving the bus. Uh, the intent is to get a really good seam between the body and the sides and the top. Next, I uh, worked on the end graft, which is zebra wood and maple. This is really just to have a visually appealing seam at the end of the guitar. And then I went ahead and glued on the back of the guitar. 
Like any other artist or builder, of course, I have to sign my work. Did some on the underside of the soundboard, and then went ahead and put a seal coat on the inside of the visual. Next, I went ahead and closed the box, glued on the top, and then used a trim router with a flush cut bit to get rid of all the overhang and we have a nice transition from the top to the sides. Up next was more focus on the neck. Here you can see um, planing and routing the carbon fiber inserts in the neck. They were actually routed slightly deeper than they needed to be so that I could put wood inserts so that I have a solid gluing surface across the entirety of the neck without any gap or poor gluing surface from the epoxy and carbon fiber. Next, I started trimming the fretboard closer to the final shape, getting that nice and cleaned up, and then started working on the inlay. It's kind of hard to see here, but this is where I had a bunch of scrap wood and started cutting it to shape, and then started working to inlay that into the fretboard. First I did the branch with the leaves, and when that was done, then I went ahead and inlaid the birds so they looked like they were sitting over top of the branches. Then I filled all of the gaps with sawdust and super glue. and then scraped and sanded that into the final shape. I then leveled the neck for the fretboard, cut the neck tenon, and then the corresponding mortise for the joint of the body. I then used the oscillating spindle sander to get the right thickness on the headstock and started shaping the neck, cutting the headstock slots, and then finally gluing on the veneers for the headstock. I then glued in the fretboard side markers cut out the slots on the headstock veneer, and then went ahead and glued the fretboard onto the neck. Followed by the heel cap. I then routed the perimeter and glued in the maple binding to the sides of the body and then started applying finish. I think I ended up with somewhere around 12 coats of True Oil, which is a gunstock oil or oil-based varnish. I really like the way this turns out both with the satin finish and it's a very, very thin coat of finish. Before finishing the soundboard, I measured up the bridge placement and masked that off the tape, and then began applying that same uh, True Oil finish to the soundboard. I then worked on shaping the neck. Here you can see I'm using a Shinto saw rest and then cleaning it up on the spindle sander. I then drilled the holes for the tuners and then started cleaning up the fretboard. First cleaning up the fret slots and then going ahead and installing the frets. And after quite a bit of sanding, it was time to go ahead and start applying that same true oil finish to the neck. While the neck cured, I went ahead and glued on the bridge, and then, and then installed the bridge pickup, also cutting a hole for the three and the side. Of the 
Finally, a level crown and polish on the frets to get them really into good playing shape. And then it was time to really start putting it all together. Bolt on the neck, put on some strings, and start letting it sing. <laughs> 